This video is about how to group data when visualizing it using ggplot. And this can allow us to see if there are differences in the behavior of different groups of data points when we're making plots. We're starting uh, having already loaded uh, ggplot2 and loaded the data that we've been working with, this data on Acacia. And now let's go ahead and start with our ggplot function, and we're going to modify it a little bit to let us group things. So uh, we say ggplot, parentheses, data is equal to acacia, and then mapping, I'm going to set this on its own line here, mapping is equal to AES, we're defining an aesthetic. And then we still have X is equal to the circ column, comma Y is equal to height. But now one way that we can group things is by color. And so inside the aesthetic, we can say color is equal to treatment. And what this does is it says color the points based on the value in the treatment column. And if we add a plus to the end of the line, then we can go ahead uh, and add our geom point so that we get a scatter plot and run this code. And now we'll see in our graph that the points are colored by uh, the different manipulations. So red points are mega herbivore exposures, green point are meso herbivore exposures, uh, purple is full exposures, uh, and then the open points are the controls. Grouping by color on a single graph is one way to group things. It can be really useful if we have a small number of groups that we're splitting things over, and it's important to see those points right next to one another. But it can get kind of noisy if we have a large number of groups. And so the other way to group things when we're making plots is into subplots, also known as facets. And so to do that in ggplot, we can again say ggplot data is equal to acacia, comma, mapping. And now we're going to go back to the basic mapping we had before. So our aesthetic is x is equal to circ and y is equal to height. And then plus, we still want geom point, we still want a scatter plot. But now we're going to add another plus, And for the last line, we're going to say facet underscore wrap. And that says, create a separate facet or subplot for each group that we want to divide things by. And to tell it which group, we put a tilde, so that's this sort of wobbly line, and then the name of the column that we want to split things into subplots based on. And so again, that's treatment. And if we run this, what we'll get is a separate graph for each of the different treatments. And by default, the axes will be exactly the same for all of those facets. And so we can still visually compare uh, where the points lie. And this shows us an interesting result. Well, why do you think uh, there's only one data point here in our open uh, treatment or our control plots where there are no fences. 
If you said that's because acacia is delicious, you're right. And so when there's no herbivore exclosure here, uh, the elephants and the giraffes and everything else come in and they eat up all that acacia and there's basically none left. So that's the idea behind how we group things when making graphs in ggplot. We can either set the color inside the aesthetic to the column that we want to group on, and that will give us one set of points in a particular color for each group. Or we can add facet wrap at the bottom of our ggplot call, and then a tilde, and then the name of the column that we want to use to split things into facets or subplots.